What is up guys? So in this next lesson, I want to focus on some technique based things and some flourishes that you can use that are particularly synonymous with the style Neo Soul. So I think a great exercise to start with is what I like to call the gospel flick. Now, really, this is something that is actually maybe overused in this style. Straight away, I can tell if a player has been studying Neo Soul or, you know, the gospel things if I hear this lick. First of all, I think we should apply it to a bog standard E minor 9 shape. This is probably the most common Neo Soul chord shape. So if we go to the 12th fret on the D string, G string and B string, we're going to play those three together, but then we're going to put our little finger on the 9th. Remember the root is E, so that is the major 9th of E, the 14th fret of the high E. And this shape sounds like this. Now what we are going to do is actually use a series of hammer-ons and pull-offs to achieve a kind of flurry of notes. So how do we do this? We think of this as the straight line. This is the anchor point, the first finger, when it's barring across. What you will do with each individual one of these notes is hammer on to a note from the pentatonic or a note from the Dorian scale. So you can get sounds like this. So to expand on that, this is where the gospel flick comes in. So you could take that right the way through the scale. Let me give you an example of that right now. This is used absolutely everywhere. It's kind of the typical neo soul lick. So you can do that whenever you play a minor seven chord. So you could take, I don't know, series of them like we did before, or maybe let's just take two. Let's take A minor seven and then B minor seven, for example. So I'll just play those shapes first. They sound really cool together. If you have two minor seven chords next to each other like that, a tone apart, what you can actually do to add a bit of spice is play a chromatic note in there. So by that, I mean we are going to play the gap and we can take the same shape, just move it down. So this time we're going to go B minor seven, moving towards A minor seven or back down to A minor seven. And we're going to just play the same lick chromatically down. Listen to this. <laughs> But to take this one step further, how can we expand on this? I think a great way to start is to go right the way back to the diatonic C major scale, and we can look at adding in notes around each chord shape from the pentatonic scale or from the Lydian scale. Totally up to you. If we go to the first one then, we are gonna take a C major seven that's built on chord one. We'll take this shape. <laughs> So you could add in notes around it like this. We could take D minor seven, that's chord two, and do the same thing. Chord three, which is E minor seven, so the same kind of idea. F major seven, chord four. G dominant 7 chord 5 chord 6 A minor 7 chord 7 is a little bit tricky usually I leave this just it how it is so that's the B minor 7 flat 5 and back to C major 7 so if I play that almost like a scale now, that will give you an example of how this can actually sound with these flurries. Mm -hmm. 